Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another amazing episode on the Unleashing Potentials podcast. My name is Bernadette Desir, and I'm your host. And joining me today is Dr. Tam Blake. How are you? I'm doing well, Bernadette. I'm pleased to be with you here. And certainly Unleashing Potential is you know, absolutely needed. And certainly we, we connect on that level on that particular topic. So it'll be exciting to to engage in, in a discussion with you about, you know, what's going on with people and identity and life as a whole. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So can, can you tell us, where about are you tuning in from? Right. I, I'm living in Minnesota. I've been here all 59 years of my life. And so, and uh, yeah, I've uh, just really, the roots are here and uh, we've got a whole bunch that's gone on as I've engaged in my potential in terms of living here. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Welcome to the podcast. I appreciate you taking the time to be here today. So a little bit more about who I am. I'm, you know, I'm a mental health professional. You know, I've been, been mm-hmm. you know, engaged at, at that level for you know, 30 years. You know, and uh, you know, I'm actively involved in, in really helping people discover and become who they were created to be. And uh, that's played a role you know, in terms of my mental health care, in terms of all the various people I've worked with, as well as you know what I'm moving into in terms of adding, you know, helping people in a coaching vein. So you know, it's really unleashing potential is really a core of who I am and what I do. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, can you tell us what were you doing prior to doing the work that you're doing right now in mental health? Right. So then it just gets right into my story because there, there really you know, wasn't a whole lot of prior to. You know, yeah. So, you know, I actually grew up in a trauma influenced home. See, when I was young, my mother, you know, essentially, you had a point as a kid had a breakdown. She was put in the hospital for an extended period of time. You know, I, I'm much different than hospitalization today with some, you know, what would have been mania at that point. And so they, they called her bipolar. They put her on lithium. Um, and yeah, well, there's a lot of instability. Now, in her adulthood, she you know, had flashbacks come up and, and really realized that she was you know, the victim of you know, complex trauma at the hand of her oldest brother, who was dead before I was ever alive. You know, but it, it significantly impacted her. You know, and so I've got this you know, trauma-informed family, as well as you know stuff I encountered in terms of being bullied and harassed all throughout my schooling. So those are impact points in, in terms of my own you know, pain points. Mm-hmm. But within that, you know, and the good things my mother did, which she always shaped you know, who I am and, and you know, encouraged growth. In that, when I was a you know, young you know, young man, about uh, middle school thereabouts, you know, with one of the relatives where there, you know, she had a woman who was drinking all the time and you know, flat out, you know, can't stand straight drunk you know one day they, they asked me to to walk her home you know because she didn't live too far from my grandmother's where we were and so yeah you know, i walked her home you know did all i had to do when i came back my mother sat down you know tell you're really really doing well at listening yeah that's a strength of yours and so really what you probably want to consider moving into and doing is moving into psychology and so that was an ignition point for me that that set off everything that happened thereafter. So, you know, I did psychology right away in college, moved from college into finding a bachelor's level job, which had been working with actually you know, developing impaired individuals and group homes and got my master's degree. And then once my master's degree, it's been you know, in counseling you know, since. Yeah, so <laughs> there's not really a point where mental health wasn't a part of my life, really. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, I can only imagine how hard that is. Uh, you know, growing up in the home that you did, but I, I can see that you have transformed all that pain and trauma into something so magnificent and beautiful that you're transforming other people's life. And uh, I, I'm diagnosed with. I don't know. I have, they put a few labels on my file and <laughs> right. And um, would you agree that everyone has some type of mental health condition because it's the psyche. We experience emotions, maybe at various degrees. What are your thoughts on that, on approaching it? So everybody, let me put it this way. Everyone's been hurt at some point. 
Okay. So we've all got injuries. So some are lesser injuries. Some are really, really traumatic injuries, you know, like what my mother went through. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've all got injuries. So here's one thing uh, I always try and help people understand about what we call uh, mental health. See, see, but what the, the we've got is a list of symptoms that describe something. And then we put a name on it. Yeah, and none, none of the mental health diagnoses are scientifically verified. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they were listed, identified, and a group of people agreed that this is what we call this. And then this is how we treat what we call this. This is what happens with them we call mental health. And, and see, the hard part is when we even view mental health, and, and we're recording this actually on the 10th of October, which is Mental Health Awareness Day. Now, of course, when the audience views this, we'll be well past that. But you know, you know, mental health is stigmatized because we get the viewpoint of somebody being broken rather than somebody being injured, somebody maybe not living in alignment with who they are, not living in their potential, not living life. You know, they, they get bound up by one thing or another. And someone gets bound by you know, having certain genetic things happening that are part of who they are, but rather than uh, tending to refining what are the strengths, mm -hmm. you caught into what are the weaknesses and what's not functioning well. Yeah. And, so, you know, and in terms of understanding even just basic mental health, You've got, and you know, what they're concerned about is the stress and the impairment. You see that that's a, the two key factors in terms of mental health diagnosis you find in the DSMs. It's stress and impairment, but really growth and potential is way beyond. It, it's really living true to who you are, mm -hmm. and, and some of the things that exist out there create some challenges. So say, say, for example, individuals that have got an attention deficit disorder. You know, so that, that this label we put on, an, an informational uh, processing, unique way of the brain you know, handling thinking and handling attention, handling life. But when we look at their behavior, which they can be very, at times, hard for others to understand or even themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and they got a whole lot going on all the time. And there's strengths in that. And there's weaknesses. And just like all of us, and all of us have got a way that we're, and we are, and we're going to have strengths, and we're going to have weaknesses. And so some of what goes on is genetic, but we can oftentimes get the view, yeah, I'm broken, I'm no good, I'm messed up, yeah, or, yeah, words much stronger. Yeah, 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 I agree, definitely agree. And um, I think it's so important to continue to be a voice and to continue to dismantle the stigma that is attached to mental health. I'm schizophrenic and men, um, depression, anxiety. I don't know what else they put on there, but the, I know the schizophrenia one really, really gets people. And uh, they're very quick to judge uh, people who are diagnosed with it. As you can see, um, I look well. I'm speaking as clear as I can. Yes, sometimes my thoughts, they, they scrambled. I don't know how to describe it. And I use pictures and vi visualization uh, to express what I'm trying to say, yeah. right? But um, how can we continue to dismantle and break down the stigma, the shame, the guilt that society, family members and friends put on people like me and other people who's watching? Well, it's a seek of understanding because even you know, a word as loaded as schizophrenia, I even I encountered an individual uh, an ex who said, you know, I was I was schizophrenic and it healed and this is why. And there's a whole host of trauma. And I tried to you know, encourage them. You know, it really we're talking about here is psychosis, and I probably would have labeled it schizophrenia. And of course, they didn't like me saying that. That they got some yeah. some you know, connection to that word, uh, which uh, okay, that's that's all well and good. It's really understanding who, what's going on with you. See, a lot of psychosis you know, may come from you know, things that are going on that may have happened from trauma. And there, there, there's a lot of trauma that leads to what we can call schizoaffective disorder or other elements of psychosis or even you know, personality disorders, which can have some psychotic elements to it you know, in terms of symptoms. We're just talking about what you're experiencing you know, and, and uh, how you manage it. Yeah, you know, some people may have a unique brain, a unique way they're created that we call schizophrenic, and but they may walk the line between spiritual realities and, and this world. You know, I mean that there's spiritual dimensions that that get all mixed up, and they see or perceive things differently 
than the rest of us and, and shift into different experiences that you know, hard to tell what's real and what's not. And these are things that go on with you know, psychotic and schizophrenic experiences. Yeah, I don't have anything to verify any of that, but my observation with uh, dealing with some, at times, even pretty profound individuals with psychosis, uh, yeah, 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 it suggests that there's just something more. You know, yeah. And, and, yeah, just if we look to understand and, and not judge, because here, here's one thing we do. We, we, by nature, people tend to judge and judge harshly. Yeah, and even today, you know, talking with the guys I, I talk with, you know, working with complicated dependent men, and talking about you know just mercy, you know, where justice is really about you know you know correcting things, even taking what uh, what gets in the way out of the way. I mean that that's really kind of the, the core of justice and mercy. You know, lifting up that which is weak and, and to get it flowing properly. So if we engage one another out of care and love, you know have concerns and we see things wrong speaking truth and love rather than saying you're 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 wrong you're wrong you got this the harsh judgments we do on one another and we all do it yeah it generates hurt and pain and then we operate out of the hurt and pain that gets generated you know we do this damage here do this damage here and sometimes what happens is you know yeah when i was a kid i experienced this so i'm going to make sure if i'm a parent I, my kids never experience what i did Instead, you you create a whole bunch of different pain by uh, the corrections you make, and, and you, you and then your kids get hurt by what you did, and it's going to happen. We do this, but then how do we embrace life? How do we look for life? You, you talked about yeah, you, you saw my perception. Okay, you, you look through and you, and you see how I took in what is in life, and I've refined it to generate what's going to bring life to others. Yeah. That whole dynamic is what I call life mindset. Mm -hmm. life mindset is taking in taking in the good the bad the ugly what's happening in life mm -hmm. and taking it and refining it sorting out what, what's going on what it means for me what, what what's happening within me and what what, what is me even and and then yeah you know, then releasing finding the good and the things that can be a value and blessing and putting that out there and the things that are not releasing letting go forgiving doing these things mm -hmm. and so and that's a process and a whole lot more of, of living life in a way where you're actively seeking to engage in a flow of life. Mm -hmm. And the more people that do that, uh, the, the better that we are. The more we get stuck on our own little world and a little, little kingdom and taking whatever I can get and, and, and the rest of it, well, we're going to keep hurting ourselves and one another. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I love that you talked about, you know, spirituality being connected, accessing different dimensions. That's exactly what I went through. That's exactly what I continue to go through. Would anybody believe that I went through it? Some would, some wouldn't. And uh, I'm at the point of not justifying or giving people reason why I believe or see, you know, what I experienced because it was very real. They did yeah. diagnose me with psychosis first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wait paranoia psychosis and schizophrenia and then they added more to it but yeah right. i appreciate you mm -hmm. sharing yeah and the question i have in diagnosis is who was doing the diagnostic see with my <laughs> even all those counselors and their psychiatrists yeah see psychiatrists yeah, yeah and my, my mother's first diagnoses were coming from psychiatrists now this was in the 70s mind you <laughs> mm -hmm. oh okay. yeah right. big time but, difference but, uh, still to this day and we're talking in yeah, 2024 psychiatrists see mood swings and they'll go okay you know well I mean, they might call it bipolar some of them are a little bit more sophisticated mm -hmm. and certainly the meds that help with uh, mood shifts are, are generally the same so it doesn't really matter you know, but it matters whether the meds help or not some do and some harm um on that so you know, some may call it whatever again these are just names you know so yeah you know, the reality is what you're going through how you understand it how you filter it and how you're able to live life to your best and, and recognize when things are getting in the way yeah you know, if i'm losing touch and things are getting in the way and i can't stay grounded and then there's some things to work on. How do I get regrounded in terms of symptoms that can come from you know, what you described? Mm -hmm. um, how do I unleash who, and how do I use this in a way where it's not getting in the way, but helping others and maximizing what I can do for others and myself? Mm -hmm.
Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I'd love to hear how you came up with the name of uh, your business, Life Mind Mindset. Concept, the whole concept. So actually, as I started you know, the coaching business, I'm trying to find some things that are going to connect and, and really you know, describe what it is I'm going through because I'm constantly you know processing and sorting things out. And actually, I, I'm involved with you know, a, a group, you know, the, the, the uh, speakers roundtable. You know, we're connected with that. We're practicing speeches, and, and there was an assignment. Okay, we're going to do a five minute speech and kind of make it a keynote speech. It kind of hits on the key of whatever. I sat there and I'm going, okay, God, um, do I do I talk about everything that I've talked about before? I could talk about this. I could talk about that. And then, you know, you know, you know, and, you know uh, I've been all about growth mindset in terms of my dissertation. I could talk about that, but, you know, I find its limits. I, I don't like that. So I sat down and just kind of explored and I go in the words that came into my mind, life mindset. I wonder if that's a thing out there. Put it in. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nowhere, nobody had it. And so then <laughs> prayed about it, meditating and go, you know, this is about everything that I'm about. And, and actually I got to put some words and describe what it is I'm trying to to put to and I've been in the process of refining my language around that and finding out what it is I'm really talking about and being able to communicate that. And so it's really within the last year that the, the concept life mindset, you know, you know, you know was, was formulated. And I got a good friend in, down in Knoxville, Tennessee, you know, I sat there and talked with him and as I you know, process things often. And I told him, you know, about this. And he sat there and go, I just got shivers. Mm. And, and, I can really, he heard it, he knows me, he connected that it really is the essence of the message and that I've got to, to give to people to help people live life better and to really embrace life and not just embrace it, but to live it fully, embody it fully so that you know, people positively impact one another and there's a flow. Mm, I love that. I, I love that name for it because to have a specific mindset or just healthy mindset we can go so far when we get out of our, our way, also out, out of our heads. I have mm -hmm. to get out of my heads. I try to do it as much as I can because that's where I'm forced to stay all the time. And I distort and look at things differently. But mm -hmm. if I shift how I think, then I can behave differently or see life differently. So I love that you named it that. Right. So, yeah, refining your thoughts is one thing. Mm -hmm. But it's also you know, what comes from the heart, our emotion center, and yeah, because it is a thing that, you know, and that a lot will put out there, you know, it may minimize our brains, automate. Yeah. And so, so a lot of what we do, we're not aware of. And sometimes, you know, in order to figure out what's going on, our emotions give us a little cues. So I'm starting to feel something some, in somehow, some way. Mm -hmm. Well, what, why am I feeling that way? I don't know. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm panicking. I, I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm not afraid of anything right now. Oh, yes, you are. You just had a panic attack. So mm -hmm. you start reflecting, sorting it through, that may lead you, oh, wait a minute. I just got triggered by that. That reminded me of something back here. Oh, there's a whole lot going on. Mm -hmm. You see, because our brain automates. And, and so we got beliefs, we got things. It's not even our active thoughts or, or images or wherever your brain works that's doing it because our brain automates. Yeah, it automates because your brain is in control, and it's like, okay, we'll put that. We got that automated, and that's it even happens with you know the trauma response. You, you've been hurt bad, and then your brain adjusts to the world, and, and then it tries to keep you, you normalized and, and settled. And so you know you get breakthrough symptoms where it's trying to it settle you down, but also the 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 defensiveness, the protections, these things become automated because you had to do it, and you can't stop it, and you don't know why you keep doing it. And then you get into negativity and you end up in a spiral that keeps going and uh, you know, bringing you into destructive places. And as much as you want to, you can't try and stop it, you know, no matter how hard. Yeah. And so you got to take time and reflect and recognize and be able to see. And, and there's works, there's books out there giving you steps to, 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 to perhaps do that. Yeah, I think of uh, James Clear, Automatic Habits. I think of, you know, Tiny Habits. I mean, there's things that they're, they're tools. Mm -hmm. There's things that may help you. To adjust yourself. Yeah. And, 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 but part of any of this, you got to start by understanding and seeing it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, so what are what are your approaches when you're working with clients and who do you work with? 
Okay. So I work with a wider range of people and in my, I've got two jobs right now outside of trying to build a coaching business in my spare time, which I don't have much of. <laughs> but I, I got two jobs. When I work in the emergency room, I do crisis evaluation. So I, I get people at their worst and, and assess whether they're at enough risk where they need further intervention mm-hmm. or whether they, they're, they're able to settle down you know, reset and, and, and return to their life with taking some steps to, to get some help. Mm-hmm. So that that's my one job. My other job, I'm working with chemically dependent homeless men. Yeah, so they're really difficult men that are really a challenge and really have a hard time even seeing a need to change even though they're in treatment. And, and it's not easy to get them to embrace life when they've lived such uh, horrendous elements in their life that they they, they they can't keep a job, they can't you know, uh, keep living well you know, because they're so addicted. So those are my jobs, but I've got a much broader experience than that. But at the core of, of how I approach anybody is I sit and, and I listen and, and I hear and I ask the questions and I seek to understand, not just to give what are the set of symptoms that, that we can put on this. It's what's going on with the individual. And if you got symptoms, what's it possibly behind the symptoms if you're open enough for me to be able to see in and, and get a sense of who you are? And see, you know, I've, you know my, even when I talk to you, my, my theory about, you know, is schizophrenia and psychosis, you know, in terms of that, comes from the work I've done with individuals with psychosis. Either you're seeing them short-term in an emergency room or, or individuals that I've you know, had encountered in my life that you know, had those symptoms and saw me for a period of time as a counselor when I did that. And you know, some stories I can't really go into, but, you know, I, I formulate that. And the same my understanding with ADHD. You know, my understanding of ADHD and the information processing element it is comes from talking to a client who was ADHD. And they they sat down, they told me, okay, you know, I, I recently got in a fight. I'll tell you this, but before I, I went in any fight, I get in. See, I've already went up before I even engage in the action. And I go, oh, how do you do that? <laughs> how do you already sort out that you already, already come to the victor of whatever conflict you're in? Well, it's because my brain is it has got all these things happening, and I look through every angle in a matter of seconds that I've already played out every scenario in my head, mm-hmm. just like that. Okay, I've never heard anything described to me about that. And so I listened and learned a lot about that and, and, and then continue to explore and shape it. Now, in terms of helping people, you see, helping people is finding and with them and for them what are going to be the things to help. And part of it is to give the understanding that I have to give and my unique perspective and understanding of things, but also try and help them find the things that help them. See, in terms of there's there's no one set psychotherapeutic uh, uh, way of being that's better than the others. You know, we even call that the Dodo Bird, Dodo Bird Theorem. It doesn't really matter which way of therapy you engage in to get some help. Just a matter of you engage in a process that works and helps you and building up the skills you know, on positive psychology, building up the things that you can build up rather than just being worried about you know, getting rid of the things that are wrong, but building up. And I go back to that just mercy concept. I want to get rid of the things that get in the way, but I also, you know, to mercy, I want to lift up the things that are positive and have value and will generate as I do that, the, the flow of life. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Um, yeah, what, what messages of hope that you have for people like me and, uh, many other people who's watching and going to listen to this, right. uh, well, what, 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 right. what messages of hope do you have for us? So you, 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 here's the first thing you know, I want to tell you, no matter what your, your, your label is, you know, the hope is that, that you are unique, you are special, you have value, you're not broken. You're, you're not something that's you know, discarded. You know, the, you know, you've got a unique way of being. And so you know, embrace who you are and find a way to bring the positive out of who you are. Because, because you, you, you're not a mistake. And some of how you are may have occurred from really awful things that have happened. Kind of like with my mother. And I, and my mother was probably less than she could have been. I mean, she was a brilliant woman, but she didn't live it. I mean, and... In this day and age, and, and probably over time, she would, yeah, ultimately would have been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder because she had a lot of impairments in her identity and the way she related to people 
you know, it was there. And but she 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 loved God, she loved life, she taught me about growth, and and some of the essence of life mindset comes from the things I learned through through living life in, in my family and what I've encountered in life. And so there's a reason and a purpose. And if you think there's not, if you, you believe in the lives and I'm broken, I'm no good, I'm not good enough, I'm not special enough, you, that's work to do. And, and, and if you're sitting there and you go, I don't even know the potential I have. I, I, I don't know who I am. How am I going to do anything? Don't you know how busted up I am? Yeah, you're right. I don't. Hmm. You do. But there's hope. <laughs> yeah. And just hope takes it a step. And recognizing, okay, these aren't things that are working right. So I, let me work on the things I can do to re remove what I can. Now, when you've been traumatized, you can't remove the trauma, but you can adjust and find life. Now, some have been hurt really so bad that their whole body changes and they get autoimmune disorders and what have you. That's what happened. my mother, you know, that, that ultimately ended to to her death at 77. Mm -hmm. Um but you, you don't worry about these things that you can't control. Take away what you, yeah, you're getting in the way and then find what lifts up what you can. Find what the things are that are your good that you can bring to others. And you can do that. You're going to have positive effects on people. Maybe it's a small number and everybody's going to have a big impact. Mm -hmm. But even one person in your life that if you have something good to give them and you give it them, that's going to give it to them and then it's going to multiply from there. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Thank you for sharing. I have two questions for you as we wrap up. The first one is what is the meaning of life for you? Well, the meaning of life for me, meaning of life is to give life. The meaning of life is, is to find the way to, to help and love others. And, see, and I, I'm a Christian as that the meaning of life ultimately is to love God and to love others. And that's at the core. Yeah, you know, and so you know, so, and if you're not at somebody who's got that same perspective, well, you know, you know explore what's going on. I'm I'm not going to browbeat anyone in terms of where they're they're coming from on the spiritual nature, other than I know what I believe and what I've seen to be true. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that is really what life is all about. Me loving others. That's even why I got life mindset. It's all about how to engage, not just about me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, how can people reach and connect with you? I think I can see a website in the background there. Yeah, that, you got, you got the, the little name on the, the yeah. background. You can also see up at the top right up here. Yeah. You know, you, you, I've got a you know, life success gift dot life mindset dot life. So life mindset dot life is my website. Mm -hmm. And I've got a reflective you know, book in you know, your writings that are all about potential, all about identity, and actually about authenticity, originality, and connection. And so they're not instructive writing. It's you know, meditative, reflective writing, and even a way to reflectively sort through exercises there. So you know, it's something I put together for, for a summit that's yet to air, you know, but it, it, it's something that would uh, be a helpful tool that you can utilize, and that's going to be free, that you can just go to the website there and, and get a copy of that, you know, life success gift dot life mindset dot life. Lots of life. <laughs> well, um, we need life. We need we to need be rest, resuscitated so, every day. Look at that and, and uh, yeah, I'm still in the process of refining things in terms of business. So uh, the website is not fully what it can be yet. So I'm still refining that. But but you, know, you can get that book. You can you know, attend to me there. That's the number one in place. If you got folks on Facebook, I've got Discover Life Mindset Public Group. If you just want somewhere that, that's going to connect. Mm -hmm. you know, and again, you know, what I do does have spiritual Christian spiritual perspective from it. In the book, it's got you know, you know a Bible verse and some reflective writing, but it's got psychological writing. It's also got a quote you know, from you know, a secular source, an older one, you know, you know, and whatever, and some writing towards that, all to engage in a process that meets you to be able to work through it. So you you can use one piece or whatever piece of that free book to be able to help you in your journey. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, Dr. Blake, thank you so much for all you do. Thank you for your time. I had so much fun just uh, talking about this topic that I think we should continue to talk about. So thank you for all you do. Right.
And Bernard, at any time talk about or some question or something, it is a, you know, I wonder if Dr. Tim would have something to say about that. Uh, just, just hook me up, you know, how to get a hold of me, you know, anytime. Uh, I'd be more than welcome to, to continue to share. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, Bernadette. Yes, thank you. I hope you have a good day. I, I, got, I got two doctor's appointments to go to. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'll let you know if oh, I have no. any questions. And you can resend me the, the stuff you sent, and I'll look for it. Okay, thank you.